There we go. Welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is the 10th of July already. Um, Debbie, I owe you a, a, a manuscript. I will get to you. <laughs> anyway, hi. Hey, I'm going to do introductions. Um, just as freezes, but I think you will have a second. Yeah, we're back. Andrea, why don't you start off? Oh. I was muted. Hello, I'm Andrea Zellner. I'm here from rainy Michigan and um, AI enthusiast and excited to hear from our guests tonight. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Debbie, welcome. I'm, thanks. I, I'm Debbie Abelak and I'm um, deep in the weeds of trying to figure out AI, reading people's manuscripts and realizing I know they didn't use AI because they're so bad. So <laughs> they're, they, they haven't even reached this that level of AI. So um, feeling a little overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Thank you. We'll, we'll, we'll see if we can increase your confusion tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Marina. Hi, Marina. I'm a general third grade general education teacher in New York, and I've been spending the past year uh, getting more comfortable with AI myself, but also figuring out how to support learners so that they can use AI in the classroom. Cool. And Marina and I just started a three week, we meet with them once a week, um, sessions with Free service teachers, math and science oh, nice. teachers at Lehman College. So that it's it's pretty wonderful. The one guy who couldn't make it and came afterwards, just to give you one quick story about who these kids are. They they feel like kids. Um, is uh, he he was he couldn't come to our face to face meeting, but I met with him at nine o'clock, and he said he he had to stay late at his job to do overtime. And I, well, what job do you do? He said, uh, he said, I'm a lifeguard. And I'm like, oh. be, be a lifeguard. We need lifeguards. Um, yeah. Anyway, so, but it's, it's great working with them. And Ashna, am I saying your name correctly? Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, hi, everyone. Ashna just present, yeah. just presented this, this today. Yeah. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Ashna. I'm a rising sophomore. And um, some things that have really interested me lately regarding AI is um, mainly like studying the human voice versus the AI voice as um, AI becomes more prevalent in a classroom setting. So that's something that I'm talking about today. And using the writing partners tool in the classroom and I'm also interested in psychology research as well. That's something that I've been doing. And I'm really excited to be here today. So cool. Um, you are were the a student of um, Jill Sadronsky, is that correct? Yeah. When you when yeah. you were in eighth grade. So it's been a year since yeah. you've been with her. Cool, cool. Yeah. So we're we're also curious about that transition. Um, what happens when students who are in an AI um sort of in-depth classroom then go you know to a classroom maybe and oh, yeah. you, Hello. So we'll, we'll get to that uh we're just hitting introductions here aditya introduce yourself and how long I'm can you stay today that, um i'm a rising freshman uh in basking ridge and um i have primarily been using artificial intelligence while on my school's debate team Cool, cool. Has your debate summer camp started yet? Yeah, it started on Monday. Okay. So, so far it's going pretty good. Uh, we've done, we've so far researched two topics. So the first topic was more of like a fun topic. Um, and the second one was, was more of a serious research topic. Uh, that's the one we're going to be. So we should be sure okay. that today, and then we, we're doing it. Uh, we're going to present tomorrow. We're going to debate tomorrow. The thing was that. Uh, Aditya, Aditya, I, I, we, we were yes. just doing introductions. 
I want to get back around to you, which we will okay. do. Um, I'm going to just kind of arbitrarily ask um, Ashna to present and just talk to us, maybe present your screen. We can figure that out if we can figure that out. But tell, yeah, us, tell us where you presented this today and, and how that went. So today I had the opportunity to present at Drew University on the tool writing partners and how it can be used in a classroom environment, mainly for like English language art subjects. But I also included a section at the end where I demonstrated how to use it for other things like finding possible career paths or generating ideas and topics that would fascinate me, along with even using it for another subject. Um, and my example was history. So we'll be going through that. Oh, I'll be going through that. Cool, cool. Um, Aditya, do you know Ashna? Have you guys met? No. You're a year apart from each other, I think. But, yeah. Um, are, are, you on, are you on the Rich Brothers team? No, I'm not. Okay, yeah, then I probably would not have met you. Cool, cool. And then, Marina, we'll get around to your um, Ignite talk, which you mm -hmm. did at uh, ISTE, right? Was that your first time going to ISTE? Yes. So what did you think? Um, really incredible conference. A little overwhelming at first, um, but definitely inspiring. And I left with a lot of really great ideas um, and met new people, too. So pretty cool. It won't be the last. <laughs> That's a good thing to say. Cool, cool. All right. So I'm purposely being confusing here because I want everyone here to feel free to interrupt and make this a real conversation. Um, so cool that Alana is joining us. She must have seen that I was announcing Students for Innovation, um, which we'll get to. Aditya, can you share your screen? Do you want to? Is that okay to do that? And can you lead us through what you want to show us? Or do you want me to do oh, yeah, um, part? In terms of, uh, you're talking about debate camp? So no, no, no. I'm, I'm asking Ashna. Oh, OK. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Um, Did I say yeah. the wrong name? I'm sorry. Yeah. So Apologize. I think um, in our actual presentation today, I only actually um presented on the part of using it for the other things such as like career paths and ideas. So I think that I guess I'll start with like a, I guess um, an example of a way that I would use it in English class, like oh. that first. So let me see if I can share my entire screen. Okay, and while you're doing that, I'm gonna go see if I can find where Alana ended up. Of course. Uh -huh. Seems to be getting bounced out. Okay. Instead so, of perfect. Everyone, okay, you got it. Yep. Oh no, actually, you're sharing an entire screen. Can you go back and instead share just, um, just your window? And then you um, find it I actually wanted to demo, so I will be like switching tabs and. Stuff. Stuff. Okay, go for Is it. Is that if you can figure it out, go for it. Yep. All right. So I'll try my best. Okay. So um just to begin with, I have a couple of tabs open here, and I guess I'll use an essay from English class. So in English this year, we read the Odyssey, and here's my process essay pulled up. Let me just minimize make it easier. That's better. Can everyone this. still see? Yeah. So this is my process essay. And just to make this as authentic as possible, I haven't tested this before. So these results will be very new for me. So we could see firsthand what AI produces. So I'll start by copying and pasting it. And I will go to create a document. You're much better at this than I am. <laughs> go for it. And I'm going to name it Odyssey essay. And I think I'm going to create my own writing partner for this. I remember that I didn't earn a, I didn't get a hundred on this. I think I might've gotten like a B plus around. So I want to see if I can, if this writing partner that I'm going to create can evaluate the faults in my writing and 
if it can um, identify some places that I can improve. So I want to make a writing partner um, for that purpose. So I'm going to go to new writing partner. And I think that this is especially fascinating. I mean, it's much more user friendly than using something like straight open AI for this. So I think I want it to grade me from the perspective of my English teacher, let's say. So I'll say um, English teacher. I guess that's good enough. Sure. So I'll say probably the course that I'm taking. So I took honors English nine this year. So I'll say this writing partner is an honors English nine teacher and who will read my piece and be able to give me criticisms and feedback. I'll say specific criticism and feedback. One thing that I've found is that the more specific I am in the um, descriptions and the creation of the writing partner, it helps me. Um, and when I'm asking questions to the writing partner, I don't have to be as specific with it. So that's convenient for um, anyone creating these. So I'll say this writing partner is an honors English nine teacher who will read my piece and be able to give me specific criticisms and feedback as well as suggestions on how to fix it. Fix I appreciate that. that you're thinking and writing and presenting all at the same time. <laughs> yeah. But go ahead. Yes. Of course. Keep going. So now I have to create the persona, the purpose, the process, and the product. So I feel like the persona stays pretty much the same. So I'll just copy and paste that part. This writing partner's purpose is to identify weak areas. I think that's my main goal for this. Areas in my writing and help me fix them. The process, I mean, one really helpful thing about this is that there's a guide if I'm not really sure what it's asking. So I think I'm just going to look at this part to get more of a feel of what I'm supposed to be writing. So what techniques and strategies, oh, that clarifies it. So um, I'm not really sure if I have any specific techniques in mind. I'll say what I usually say is this writing partner is thorough in answering my questions and um um elaborates and that has helped me a lot and i found that when i put this part in the um writing partner writing partners um in this section it gives me much longer and much more elaborate results so that's very helpful this writing partner this writing partner provides thorough and elaborate results when asked questions and can answer follow-up questions. I think that's also a big part of it. Hmm. Follow-up regarding my writings. And then the product, let's just see what they're asking about that what formats and templates. I'm not really sure if I want to provide any specifications for this. I personally am the type of writer that wants all the feedback that I can get. So I think I'll just let the AI do its thing. So okay. now it's asking me to choose where I want this to be um, included in. And I feel like this is probably using AI as a mentor to provide feedback. I don't know if I would say for young writers or as a mentor, but just just go with mentor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll say this. And I'll create it. So it's a really quick process, I think, and it allows me to be way more specific in what I'm asking as well, which is especially um, it's a great advantage when compared to something like OpenAI ChatGPT. 
So let's see if we can use this AI partner here. I put it in AI as a mentor. So I'm going to say English teacher. My question is, today I tried something new during the presentation. I already gave the um, writing partner a prompt and I told it what to do. So I think I'm just going to ask this AI partner to, this writing partner to read my text or to read my essay. And um, since I included all these details in the making of the, oh, what have I done? in the making of the writing partner itself, I think that it will be able to um, follow all my um, askings of it, I guess. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say, read my essay, and I'm not sure if there's really any relevant details that I want to add. So I'll just... Did you choose the whole essay to read? Uh, yes. You, got, okay, did, okay, go ahead. Yeah. So it does take a minute to load and, oh, it's here. So let's see, it did give me a lot of feedback. So I'll just expand <laughs> this and we can look at it. So some criticisms that it provided were that the thesis statement could be more concise and the wording in my intro is repetitive. And I think those are pretty valid looking at my intro paragraph. That is something that my actual English teacher commented on as well. I lost most of my points on the intro. So I think that's pretty accurate. And I like can how we, it provides can we, me with- can, can we interrupt and ask you questions? Yeah, of um, course, of course. Curious. Um, yeah, you, you sort of agree, the teacher agrees, but does this help you know what to do? I was actually going to get to that. So okay. I just noticed that it okay. provided me with specific examples. So I think I can use this as like to gauge what it's actually looking at and what it sees faults in. So I can go back and fix that in the rest of my writing. Mm -hmm. um, this is really helpful, I think, especially the examples for me, since that's the type of learner I am. And what I like about writing partners is that you can ask it different things to cater to the type of learner that you are. So if you um, benefit more off of examples, then you can change its askings for, um, you can change it to provide you with more examples. Uh, so, I, can, can I, yeah. can, I wanna see if others have thoughts on this too. Of course. This has now come up three weeks in a row, right? Yeah. Um, and not, not the whole time or anything, but and and Aditya had had an opinion that it should never give an example because somebody could copy the example and put it yeah. in their own text. Somebody else came up. Uh, Paul Hankins suggested that maybe it could give an example from another content area, but yeah. still be related in some way. Uh, or how do? You, uh, go ahead, Aditya. You can jump. I like in. the idea of an example that you can't slot in because when you do that, even if as I said in last time we talked about this, mm -hmm. is that uh, when that happens, it, it takes away from your voice and uh, reduces the quality of uh, the writing, in my opinion. Like, if I were to go back and look at some of my older pieces where I did use writing from, where I did use AI and just directly slotted in the example, or took at least like took part of the example, I could see, you could kind of see the areas that were different and it kind of stuck out like a proverbial sore thumb. Yeah. And to that, I think that I would say to each their own. I mean, it's important to remember that AI, it's not like putting these suggestions actually into my text. They're just suggestions. So at the end of the day, whether I could um, look at the examples and see, look at the um, suggestions it gives me, the specific suggestions, see if I like them or not. And if it does fit in with my text, then I would include it. And if it doesn't, then it is still just um, feedback in the end and I can take it if I feel like, so. I mean, can I, I, their own. Can I I'm sorry, go ahead. I was, I was gonna say that's the beauty of this kind of system where everybody can make yeah. their own partners mm -hmm. is that you can each have, you can do it to, your, to the way that you like prefer. Yeah, of course. Uh, also, like, I was just thinking about what the cheating, like, it can, you can copy and paste it in, I'll say, like, cheating in quotes conversation yeah. sort of implies is that we're valuing the product more than we're valuing the process. And so 
for most of our students at your age, we're really interested in how you're growing as a writer and what you're learning along the way. To me, as, as an English teacher, and I used to teach ninth grade, is uh, about how, what have you picked up? What have you learned? So to me, it would be more interesting to have hear your reflection as you're doing in your think aloud, like, oh, this is a really helpful suggestion. Here's how I took it. Here's how I adapted. Uh, rather than trying to play a cat and mouse game with it to avoid someone possibly cheating. If yeah. I had all of your output or if, you know, as teachers are asking like, hey, if you're using a writing partner, I want to, I want you to reflect on what the writing partner said to you and how you incorporated that in your work. That kind of norm around it, I think is really important. Yeah. So when I was in Ms. Dedronsky's class, she actually made us do just that. I mean, I can pivot to an article right here. I used feedback for this, and at the bottom, she made us record what AI, what feedback that the AI gave us. Um, eh, I'm not sure if it was this article, but in Ms. Dedronsky's class, she would make us um, document what the article says, like a what the AI says, like copy and paste exactly the feedback it gave us, reflect on it, and then we were allowed to do whatever we want since it was recorded on the document. But I think this does take some type of trust in the student because obviously you can't be monitoring what um, whether the student records, whether every single student is recording what AI they're using. So I say it is kind of like a leap of faith, but it is very beneficial to use writing partners. And as I'm going to show later, it's not even just a writing partner. I say it's more of like a thinking partner in general. Asha, I think I heard you say earlier that the, the comment about what you could change in your beginning, you could do in other parts of your writing too. Is that, did you say that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I did. So, so that's what I think Andrea is trying to get to. Like if you take the example and say, oh, as a writer, I could do this in other places too. That's that's yeah. what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Can I ask a technical question? There is a suggestion that if one way that we need a place for people on writing partners or now comment, a place for users to reflect on what the AI is doing. Now you could do that in the box down below but what if another pane came up to the right, another column, and yeah. you could actually annotate the AI with your thoughts? Would that be useful, you think, or any other thoughts about that? That's I something Dave think, Cole was hoping for. Here yeah, you. I think that would definitely be useful, especially for just making the AI better in general. And I think it is very helpful just helping this AI to get better so it can help us more. So. I think that's a great idea. Interesting. I also love that idea. Plus one cool. over here. Okay, got it. And I think that when I say that I don't like examples in my text, it's not really coming from a place of, oh, I don't cheating and whatnot. It's coming yeah. from a place of, I don't like, I, I just find that sometimes AI's feedback doesn't blend in with the piece. It makes the piece feel, I don't know, it feels like, robotic yeah yeah part of the yeah. like we can tell which part was written from the heart which part was written by a human and then you can kind of tell also which parts came from an ai that was just designed to shove buzzwords in the sentence i feel like what you're referring to is more like chat gpt but on writing partners i think the beauty of it is that i'm able to give my writing partner an actual persona i can give it a profession i mean even if, if i had more time i could even give it like a life with like experiences, I can make it more of a human with more of a emotional voice that ChatGPT just doesn't have on its own. And if I know, we I try to make it on uh, yeah. with voices, but I feel like, I think it was about at the time I was using a teacher generated one and I wasn't able to add in the things that I need, I wanted to kind of make it work with my piece. And I think that probably would be part of it is that one partner yeah. was being used for the whole class. So I wonder if I tried to go back to that piece and made a slightly different partner that did much the same thing, but personalized for my pieces of writing. Yeah. I wonder if that would change the results. It definitely would. I mean, it has for me. 
Um, my co-presenter today, Amia, she actually experienced, she actually experimented with just that. She used one of the teacher partners compared to her own, and she did it live. And she said that the one that she made on her own, it definitely gave her better and more um, specific feedback for to cater to her needs. So I think you're definitely right with that. Yeah. You know, what's what's really important is that in order to create an AI that meets your needs, you have to really reflect even before you write. Yeah. You're, you're really, there's so many things you could ask an AI to do. It's almost as if you have to prioritize, you have to think of what would really help you. And that in itself is a big step and a big plus um, over just handing in a finished paper and getting feedback from the teacher, right? Because you are ask, you know what you need within you in some ways, even yeah. before. Yeah, I, I love that you think that way. And I think it's very helpful for, because it it isn't cheating. It's really, learning more about what you need. Yeah. I think AI is a super helpful tool in this way. And we've used it for, I guess, what people would expect to be the most common purpose. But I really want to go and pivot now to, to some of the other uses <laughs> for found were really, really fascinating. Go ahead. So, pivot. <laughs> of course. Thank you. So today at the at my presentation at Drew, Something that I actually did live was put all three of my journals I did in Miss Dead Ronsi's class, which you might be familiar with. They're all reflective journals, um, prompts, and they're um, places where I documented my experiences and I made personal connections to writing texts. Just a lot of things that I, came straight from my heart. I so just want to give you. I just want I, to give you, you and Miss Zdronsky, thumbs up that you guys did this presentation live. Uh, that's kind of amazing you did. Yeah, in other words, you didn't make slides ahead of time and show them. But I have a presentation that Drew was on the 18th. You may have a different one. Yeah. <laughs> ah. to today. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, she, she might be doing too. But wait, can you just show slides, But you don't have so, to do this one live necessarily. Can you just show from your library what you did? Is that possible? Yeah. Well, the thing is, we did have a technical difficulty where my oh. live product, it was on, it's on a different account. So I, oh. I could just summarize what it gave me and if that's better. Sure. So just to reiterate what you said, th what I'm thinking you're saying, you actually reflected on your own and now you're having AI interact in some way with those reflections. Yeah. Is that what? So... Uh, yes, that's mainly what I did, but I used Asha, a writing Asha, Asha, yes. Don't let me interrupt you. Go ahead and do it. Oh, of course. I Whatever you were thinking to do. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just think it might be easier in the end. Yeah, so I can just talk through it. So okay. I put my, my three journals, the, the reflective journals where all my thoughts were there, and I asked the AI to identify recurring themes. So yeah. I, I made a writing part to help me identify recurring themes and to help me generate some ideas that would um, fascinate me. And it, I wanted to compare that to the topic of my TED Talk. The process in Ms. Ed Bronsky's class that I went through was I looked at my journals. I looked at the topics that I did this all manually. I looked at the topics that inspired me. I went through weeks and weeks of going on tangents and different topics. And my point with this was to just, just mainly demonstrate how AI took all my writings and it did what weeks and weeks and it did it all in around maybe five ten minutes. So it really made that process much easier and much faster, even though I do think that process of thinking and going through it, it was a valuable process, but especially for shorter semester courses or just for other uses, I think it could be very useful to help create ideas. So what you're doing is you're you're, you're copying and pasting all of your notes from the different reading and and so forth. Yeah, my reflections. Into one document. Yes. So, so let me let me clarify. So you actually did this pro process yourself first, 
and then you did it with AI to see what the difference would be. And yes. what was the difference? I mean, not, aside from the speed, oh, I mean, did you see things that were not what you thought or things that you disagreed mm -hmm. with or? There were definitely things that I hadn't thought of in there, but my main point with that was to prove that the results were mainly the same. I mean, the topic that I did my TED talk on, it was actually, I think, in one of the top three topics that it was able to um, find recurring themes about in all three of my journals. So I guess that was the point that I wanted to make that AI can take something that took me so long and it can do it so accurately as well. It was so, good you checked it too, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's taken a while to spin. I'm not sure. I why. think that's like a contestant. I always. Oh yeah, like this is it. It is around. Oh yeah, keep going. Like even like like even when I'm doing my even like people when they're using it like at jobs and stuff like uh, more efficiency saves time. Uh, like your your usage, my usage. It, it, I think across the board, that's what people are mainly. That's one of the biggest benefits of this emerging technology. Yeah. Another um, possibility though, is that it would find themes there that you didn't expect it to find. Yeah. Did that happen at all? I mean, I found a few, but most of them were things that I did actually go through the process of thinking about. Granted, I did take a very long time. I mean, much longer than my peers to find a TED talk topic, mm -hmm. but there were some things that I hadn't thought about. And I guess if I made my writing partner more specific, it could have generated even more ideas that I hadn't even that hadn't even crossed my mind. So that's, uh, you've talked us through that. Can you go to your library for a second? Now, yeah. are you are you the presenter who did the history one? The, the study guide? Yes. Oh, yes, that was me. So why don't you show that? Because I think that's kind of different today. Yeah, of course. So and I think you can just show it from here. You can just open it up again. Yeah. Um, you don't have to do it again. <laughs> go, go the thing ahead. is, I'm doing all this live. Oh, I do have, have it. It's okay, though. Well, we'd, it'd be better yeah. if you just showed. Yeah, good, good. Okay, so, so what, what's on the left side? So um, on the left side of my screen, it's the study guide for my history test and my honors global history class. And as you can see, it's pretty bleak. Who created that? a lot my one of my teachers my history teacher created this okay. so this is what was included just a couple of bullet points so mm -hmm. i created a test creator um a test creator writing partner and I, I i gave it the credentials of my teacher i said it was a honors global history two teacher with a doctorate like this many years of experience and such and mm -hmm. based on all that information it was able to produce me a test of i think the same-ish difficulty, maybe a little easier, I would say. But I think it is a great tool to study from. And it gave me questions on every single topic as long with, uh, along with an answer key at the end. This was especially helpful. I mean, before I used writing partners, I used, I did this with ChatGPT and my results weren't as good. But I feel like with writing partners, I was able to make my asks more focused and that helped me get results that were better suited to my needs. So you knew that the test would be a kind of short answer, factual test? Well, I was, the only information that I did know beforehand was that it was going to be multiple choice. So okay. I, yeah, so I put that in. You um, put that I, in your prompts? Uh, yes, my question is here. I said, can you generate a 20 question multiple choice test oh, along okay. with an answer key on these topics, as in the topics included in the study guide? Um, if you want, we can also look at the test creator writing partner, if that would make it more clear. Or I, I, I'm just a little concerned about time. Is there, yeah. another, is, there, is there another example from your library that you could show quickly? I'm just wondering. Yes, I think one other thing that I did that was really fascinating so was the, te I put my the teachers who are watching this must have been impressed. Were they or were they like, oh, my God, I don't want anything to do with this? Or how did they feel about it? I think I hope they were impressed. I mean, <laughs> they did tell us that we did a good job, I guess, but uh, they usually okay. do. <laughs> oh, come on. So, okay. 
one um were they if you if they didn't think that they would just stay quiet don't worry okay so what's this one this is your ted talk yes yeah, so this is my ted talk and my main objective with this was because i um spent the entire year researching on this topic or at least most of the year so i asked it to give me some possible career paths that i could go into in the future based on my interests wow. so that was something definitely new and it generated some recurring themes for me which is what i asked it to and then it generated me a lot of um job descriptions and then the qualifications that i would need as well and then it gave me problems that i could solve as well in my future and just a lot of good information i would have gone more um deep into this but um as a follow-up question we also asked it to generate three books that might interest me based on my ted talk and one it was actually pretty cool that the first where, book, where is that i saw that earlier where is that yeah it was it was on amia's account so oh, okay I, okay it's okay That's yeah fine. So the it was pretty fascinating that the first book it gave me was actually the first book that I did read to do my research on this TED Talk. And that is what most of this TED Talk is you based say, on. You say, duh, AI, I did that one already? Sorry, I'm just playing. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I think it gave me Mindset by Carol Dweck. It gave me Grit. And then it gave me another book. And I thought that was extremely fascinating since that was actually the first book that I read to make all of this. So... This is just what I found. So how did you feel how did you feel about that when it, it identified the book you had actually read already? I mean, I was really amazed. That was the first time we were doing it. I was trying to keep it all authentic. So I hadn't tried that before. We were just doing it live and going with the flow. So that was really cool, especially to see live. I didn't know what was going to happen and it definitely impressed me. It's a it sort of makes it credible if it identifies something you should read that you did read already. Makes yeah. you think, oh, maybe the other suggestions are good too. Perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's okay. it for me. And Actually, yeah, yeah. I, you've, uh, you've shown us a lot. Thank you. Thank you. And Marina, are you still there? I think you are. Are you ready to present uh, play? Oh, Marina, Marina, uh, where'd you go? I'm here. Okay, um, good, good. Um, I, I do want to give Ashna, um, and next week, um, what's, what's your colleague's name? Um, Ashna. Drew or no, no. The, or... the the other person you presented with. Oh, Amia. Yeah. Amia. Amia is going to be with us next week to kind of talk through her stuff. Um, and Amia is involved with the students for innovation that Alana Winnick would um, has been yeah, has been supporting and making happen. And you can click on that and find out about it. But do you want to say what you know about it? Yeah, so to my understanding, Students for Innovation, it's an AI advocacy type of organization, which promotes like using AI. Um, it promotes um, using AI in the classroom more and it provides resources for teachers and students to help make that conversation in the classroom um, be a little better, I guess. That's just my basic understanding of it, but I think there is a downloadable on the website, just giving you a gist of what the website does provide for teachers. That's a good. That's a good suggestion. And next week we'll pick up. I yeah. um, I do want to ask you though. It, it's it's not true that you went from Ms. Sadransky's class to no AI in the classroom at all. I don't think. But what was your experience like going from a, a deep, sort of playful use of AI in eighth grade to going to ninth grade? What was that like? I mean, the way you put it the first time, it was actually pretty accurate. Oh, I really? mean, we went from we went from using AI every single day to not even be able not even being able to write on computers because some of my teachers were just so scared that we would cheat using AI. <laughs> I mean, especially in my history class, where it's like pretty hardcore, like she picks a essay topic out of like a bucket and we have to write on it as one of our tests. And we weren't allowed to use our computers. I mean, it would have been so much more convenient for like deleting things and switching places around, but we had to handwrite the entire thing, long essay, like three or four pages. And it was not the best experience. I definitely feel like she should have trusted us a little more. So. I think 
using AI is definitely like beneficial, but I feel like a lot of teachers are just a little too scared of it. Do you think it's changing at all at your high school? Um, I haven't really seen much change this year, but I think it is really changing down at the middle school with Miss Dedronsky and right. things are going really well over there. So hopefully that change will be brought over to the high school. Soon. So Miss Dedronsky has started to talk to some people in your district about yeah. pulling together some students like yourself to have this conversation with parents, district leaders, yeah. other teachers. What, what do you think would be accomplished with that? Um, I definitely think that it's an important conversation to be had, and I think it should happen as soon as possible. I mean, AI is only going to get smarter and more intelligent, and I think you just have to embrace that. AI is such a useful tool, and it can really revolutionize education. And I feel like the sooner we have this conversation, the better we can make our own, We could, the better we can make education in our own school district and districts across the country to better suit students' needs and to make lives easier for teachers as well. Before Marina presents, uh, and Marina, are you ready to present your, your Ignite talk? Before uh, you do, I want to I want to give um, um, Ashna here very specific feedback. If I could ask all you to do that, because it sounds like people said you did a good job, you did a good job, but it wasn't very specific. What did yeah. you appreciate, Andrea? Could I ask you to turn to that and Debbie and yeah? I really appreciate your willingness to walk us through your thinking and also mm. put your writing up there. I mean, when people, usually when people have writing out in the world, they don't want to share their criticisms. Like, oh, I don't want anyone to seem like I've got food in my teeth or something. But that was really brave. And you also really spoke so eloquently about uh, all the affordances of the technology. So I just thought you did a great job. I'm gonna end with that. You did a great job, but I had specific things too. <laughs> you did indeed. Debbie, Thank any you thoughts? So much. You know, what I loved is that you wanted to make it feel authentic, that you were authentically modeling the process that you had used elsewhere on new material, and you were prepared to be surprised. I love that. You're th that vulnerability makes you so smart. Thank you so much. Yeah, Aditya, what did you think? Uh, good job presenting. Uh, I'm going to crack a couple jokes here, but uh, okay, when I talk to the debate team, <laughs> you seem like you're pretty good at thinking on the fly. <laughs> Thank you. Um, also, do you have another joke? Just really good presentation in general. Uh, okay. Thank you. Also, right. quick question: How what uh, know, what courses did you take in your in your freshman year? I took all honors, and then I took honors algebra too. Okay. That's that's going to be another thing to tackle, maybe in the next century. Like, because not everybody can get into those honors classes, right? Yeah. But I'm glad you did. <laughs> well, hopefully, we can make a little more progress on the ninth grade teachers' attitudes towards AI. Yeah, okay. hopefully. Well, if the two of you get together, <laughs> they'll either fire Miss Sadronsky or they'll make some changes. That's just a joke. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Marina, what did you think of that presentation? And are you ready to I, ignite? I thought that was incredible. I think that you, the word that, Debbie already stole it, I was going to say. Oh, um, I appreciate how vulnerable you were um, to put your work out there for us to see and how you also had the mindset of, hmm. I can always look back at something I've done. Like, I don't know when all those pieces were from, but I really appreciate like from a writing perspective, just that you're, you're willing to even like look back at like your work and then all of the feedback that you're getting from the writing partners that you're personalizing for yourself. Like you're getting to know yourself better um, as a writer, as a student, as a human. Um, and I think that, you know, uh, um, Amia, am I, uh, is it Amia? Yeah. Your friend? Yeah. Okay. So Amia, you know, I, 
I don't know her, but I, I've heard her speak. Um, and I, I hear you speak. And um, a few of my third graders who are eight and nine years old have been on um, panels with her and other um, young people. And um, they're, they're really listening to all of you. Um, because your points are very poignant that this is this is not just the future, this is now. Um, so I love the way that you are embracing the technology. And, um, you know, I think that big question is, you know, what do you do when one teacher is, um, well, you know, Marina, doing all Marina, this? not to call out your school or anything, but you mentioned that it's an issue for your third graders, right? What's going to happen next year? Well, that's exactly where I was going to go with it. Mm. Nothing against anybody I work with because they're amazing at what they do. Yeah. But, you know, I did a lot of work with my students um, in a variety of different ways around AI literacy and building their understanding of what artificial generative artificial intelligence is, um, making a lot of connections with them and then building in a lot of other essential skills that supported their writing development, their media literacy skills, their collaboration, their articulation. Um, just a few things. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm just no, I'm no, trying to think great. of like the, yeah. the bigger, the bigger impactful elements that they're getting from, you know, you know, experimenting and, and playing almost in a way um, with this in a in a safe and ethical way. And Alana and I have really done a lot of work um, and we still are. We, we just met today and we were um, just reflecting on some things we did this year with the, this um, amazing group of kids and, and how we're going to, you know, keep um, sharing it out and um, and building new experiences for uh, the, the next group that's coming in. Cool. So Ignite was in five minutes. Do you think you could do it and make your slides go at the same time and share them? Uh, or let's try. We have we have 10 right. minutes, so we can figure this out. I'll try. So um, just. You're presenting, and then, yeah, you need to find your slides. Yeah. OK. This does have an element of AI in it. <laughs> just find it doesn't what do you mean your presentation does or okay hit start I... and then you hit start and then you should go we don't see anything yet there we go it came up. you're showing everything there you are. perfect okay Okay, so just so everybody knows, these slides are on an automatic 15 second timer. Oh, they are? Oh, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are in order, Paul. Yesterday, I, I didn't do the, the five minutes. I just kind of talked through them a little bit with our pre service teachers, but um, I'll try to do it as the five minute uh, Ignite talk. It's been about a week and a half. It's been about two weeks since I did it, a week and a half. I don't know. Go for it. You can do it. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. As soon as I start it, it's going to go. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So a couple of months ago, I read Adam Grant's new book called Hidden Potential. And in that book, I learned about deliberate play, which is the idea of using playful means for skill acquisition. But in that book, I also learned about something called bore out which I realized that I was experiencing and bore out is just kind of like when you're kind of getting tired of the mundane ins and outs and routine things that are happening. And problem with bore out is that if you are experiencing bore out, so are your students. And that's a shame because they have a lot of assets and gifts swirling around their minds and they're ready to release them to the world. So I realized I had to do something about me feeling bore out. And just to be really clear, bore out is not the same thing as burnout. Bore out is when you're feeling unmotivated for long periods of time, under challenge and dissatisfied, most likely because you have a lack of mental stimulation. 
So I decided that I wanted to keep exploring and I came across another book called The Power of Fun from Catherine Price. And in this book, Catherine advocates for people of all ages to be living in a playful way. And I really love that because, you know, I was experiencing what I was experiencing. And like all um, really incredible thinkers, she has an acronym and all of the letters stand for something, but I'm going to focus on the R, which stands for rebel. And because I was having this um, bore out kind of thing, I had to rebel against something. So I wanted to rebel against some of the conventions um, that I was feeling with some think changes going on in school and I wanted to add more play into the classroom because it's really crummy when you teach eight and nine year olds and they tell you the only time that they play in school is at recess. So I decided to get a little help from AI. I knew I wanted to design a lesson plan framework using the acronym PLAY. I typed in all of the different things that were important to me, like the ISTE standards, my teaching philosophy, and I got a lot of outputs. And what I did, as any responsible AI user should do, is I started remixing the ideas because I wanted it to be personalized to me and my students and not just something that was spitting out by AI because I feel like that wouldn't have been fun. So here's what I came up with. The P would stand for playful exploration. And this would be a time when my students were drawing, acting, tinkering, building, and creating. And it would be connected to the lesson of the day. But it was really a time to lower anxiety and have more fun so that they could get ready to link and leverage it to new vocabulary, guiding questions, new concepts. And with all of this new background knowledge, they would be able to get themselves back to another place, which is the A, active engagement. Now, this would still be a task that was definitely grounded in fun, but now that they had more information, they would understand the depth underneath what they were doing. And then like all good lessons, we need to have an opportunity for metacognition and thinking, and that would be the what yield to reflect, where we would slow down and we would ask ourselves, how did we actually grow during this? What are some new understandings that are sticking with us? And I thought that this was a really great idea and I was not feeling bored anymore, but I had to propose it to my students. So I showed them everything I just showed you. And I said to them, would you be okay if I tried to plan some of our lessons like this? And of course they said, yes. <laughs> so here's a little, um, little bit. Um, so you could see on the left hand side, two of my students, they just had those two wheels and a piece of the piece of cardboard. And I said, build a ramp and have some races and see what happens. And they had a great time. And what really happened is that when we linked in leverage, we were bringing up the ideas of forces and motions, and they learned about wheels and axles so that they could build a skateboard during the active engagement. And the goal was to get it from the top to the bottom without it veering to the left or the right. So they had to experiment with the different circles. And at the end, they are using vocabulary in their reflection, they're taking photographs, documenting, but most importantly, they're saying, I loved doing it. So there was definitely a playful, happy group of kids that were also learning and doing really important things that they needed to do. And this is the data from after when I started and I don't have it from when it begins, but I say it doesn't really matter because the blue represents how many kids say, yes, I do play in class. And if any kid can say that on any day, I think that's really good information. And what else did they think? Well, they went home and they told their parents. And I had emails from parents who were really happy because their kids were finally telling them about things that they were doing at school. And I think that that's a really important thing because that doesn't always happen. So on a closing note, you could see there's a quote from uh, Mr. Rogers. And the real important part is that it says the people who help us play make a great difference in our lives. So I helped them play and I hope I made a difference in their learning because this whole process made a difference in me too the end. <laughs> Thank you so much for presenting that. Um, are we allowed to clap? We're allowed to clap. Um, sure. You have to take yourself off mute, though. <laughs> it's okay. It's oh, okay. I was just doing it really. No, that's good. Cool. That's good. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, oh, and, and you were clip, clipping. Yeah, that's good. So, uh, um, very, very different presentations here, but thank you for the difference and, and everything. Let's give Marina some feedback. First of all, you presented this in front of what, 200 people? Uh, um, it was about so? 100 people, uh -huh. um, but it was accessible. It's accessible virtually uh, to, I think they said they had like 16,000 people registered. Yeah. It's pretty on big the conference. table there, if you click on that white thing that I'm sitting right on top of, you can find out more about Marina and whatever else she did there. Um, 
But let's give Marina some feedback or thoughts as we close out here. Andrea, so I'm going to follow I you. Have, oh, I Debbie, have, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, I have a question, mm -hmm. which is has to do with, I think what you created was a routine hmm. that allows you to approach learning with a very tactile, sensible, hands-on, a sensory experience mm -hmm. and ends with a more intellectual experience. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering if that's your inclination even before you did this. It, mm -hmm. it was your classroom a place where sensory input was often a way to stimulate kids? Because I'm wondering whether this is new or whether it's a new way of looking at what you've done in the past, but just from a different lens. Debbie, I'm gonna I'm gonna impose Does that make a, sense? A, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna no, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna make a protocol here and hear from everyone else before you answer the question, if that's okay. Oh I just it'll go fast. Oh go ahead. Never mind. I'm not gonna do that. Hi, um, go ahead. <laughs> so I think um that I've always prided myself on being a whole child educator. Um, and my teaching philosophy does include a lot of multimodal experiential learning. Um, I think that there have been, it's, we're talking about one um, thing in, in this whole, one big topic in education during this whole session. And there's other big changes, um, big pushes in education right now. And um, some of them are not always as engaging for children. Um, and this particular year, I had um, a handful of students who had some like SEL kind of um, things that were also in, in addition, you know, maybe like outside the realm of school right? So outside of my control. And I just for the first time in a really long time, and I was doing all this like great, like, AI stuff with my kids, but I had a lot of kids who really were not interested in writing, um, really disengaged. And I was trying to do all the things that we're doing, doing now. Move, it was a curriculum that your district and you um, I so had, you know, this one girl one time was like crying. She was like, I don't you tell me to read the book. And then you tell me I have to do this, these writing things in this packet. At the same time, she's like, it doesn't make sense to me. And, um, you know, it really like left a like a big I don't know, like thing on me. Like, I don't even want to, I, I won't for, like, is it a scar? I guess it could be because I won't forget about it. But I was like, I don't know. I don't want to do this. This is like not why I became a teacher. I believe that kids should come to school. They should be happy. They should learn joyfully and have fun while they're doing it. And there's no reason why they shouldn't. So um, it is in alignment with all the things that I've believed, but I kind of needed something to jumpstart me. And this is kind of really a story about me too, not just the kids. Oh, cool. I'm trying to be really careful with some of the things. I don't want to be like up you were, you were, I'm saying were, anything that might not resonate with you. Or I'm I'm open to all conversations. I just incredibly I don't want careful. to be any types of approaches because um, I I am you know I'm very comprehensive really when it comes down to it. But if a kid's not resonating with it, and a bunch of kids are not resonating with it, I have to try to do something else. They have to be happy first. Cool. Cool. Wow, Debbie, thanks for that question. <laughs> Seriously, that was an amazing answer. Aditya, any thoughts here at the end? Thanks for coming by, and we'll we'll get to your debate stuff. I promise. Yes, yeah, thank you. Um, great, I, great presentation. First, uh, really, I don't know the proper word, um, but yeah, good presentation. Thank uh, you. The numbers kind of shocked me, like 16,000 pe 6, 1600 people, 16,000 people was the number. It, it's, it's an international conference. It's yeah. huge, massive. Um, yeah. You know, and a lot of people are virtual too, so it's available virtually. So that's like another thing wow. as well. Aditya, you will be doing the keynote there soon. That's just a <laughs>
<laughs> Never mind. <laughs> I, I'm just saying you'll, you'll Well, everyone loves hearing yeah. from students. That's that's yeah, yeah. the bottom line. Like that's my favorite to hear from students and teachers. That's who I want to hear from. So you very well maybe. Yeah, um, Look into it. Ashna, um, any thoughts here at the end? And by the way, Ashna, you are on my email list and I will invite you every week to come back whenever you can. Thank you so much. Um, I That was such a great presentation. I mean, I think the conversation on that definitely has to be had. And not even, I think I'll go on to say, since I'm a student myself, I feel like even high school should be like that. I mean, I really didn't, I wasn't that happy going to elementary school either. So I feel like <laughs> it's really great that things are finally starting to change and that things are happening. And it's really fascinating, really, that whole discussion that needs to have. I feel like even coupling it with using AI in the classroom, I feel like it's the education system is outdated and it really just needs to change in general. So it was amazing, your presentation, by the way. Oh, thank you. Andrea, and then I have less word. <laughs> Uh, awesome job. Of course, someone's walking in my house right now, so I have to talk fast. But um, I was going to say, I've done those lightning talks before. They are not easy. Mad mm. props to you. I was looking at the lineup because I clicked the link. And I was like, dang, girl, I would have been freaking out. So good job. And I love the way that you use AI. It was like such a great inspiration. And um, those, I was like getting so excited when you were talking because I love both those authors as well. Um, and my last thing to you, as you're advocating for this, is that um, ESSA, our education law here, is uh, all, always is citing universal design for learning. And they have their new 3.0 guidelines coming out. Mm -hmm. So if you haven't seen them, they talk about nurturing joy and play as part of those guidelines. And so what I've found is as you're advocating for this approach, you can say, hey, this is an ESSA. This is about inclusive education. This is how we expand access for all of our That's students. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so if those guidelines are not like official out, but you can peek at the draft and we anticipate they'll be official in like the next week or, or two. So just go out to cast.org, it's C-A-S-T.org. It's also in our national ed tech plan, those guidelines. And mm -hmm. so um, there's just a lot of support from the Department of Education and from our legislators about mm -hmm. what we want school to look like. And I think local schools sometimes lose track of that a little bit. So it's a really nice lever to pull. If people are like, why are you doing this weird play thing? You can say, oh, look, it's right here in our ESSA law. Mm -hmm. um, it's nice to yeah, have that in your cool. back pocket. So I just wanted to make that connection. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you told me that, and I will look into all of those. Um, I'm in New York State, and we published a bunch of literacy briefs. And actually, when we were studying the literacy briefs as a staff at my school, it does say playful experiences from K yeah. to 12. And a lot of people were like, well, what does that even look like, like past yeah. like, age? And that's that was another thing that like kind of like kicked you know, me. Yeah, another and, catalyst. Well, you know what? Now I'm gonna now I'm gonna find out. I'm gonna find yeah. out. There are only there are there are eight and nine, but like, you know, why not try and find out what that looks like? I love that inquiry so much and props to you. Amazing so some of, some of the work Marina and I'm I'm gonna end with thank you, Marina, for that presentation. Um some of the work Marina and I are doing with the pre-service teachers at Lehman College. We are organizing four workshops, one after each of the four letters, um, introducing AI and digital literacy and so forth. Um, worth mentioning that some of the work that Ashna did is possible because of, of it all being digital. Just weren't, that's something we kind of assume, but that's, a, that's an interesting point, I think, to say. But anyway, so we're coffee. trying to get these four, what? Unless you write your essay on paper first, like a really long essay, and then want to I, copy it over, that, that would just be annoying. I know, I know. Okay, so I'll anyway, so um, by the end of this month, we'll have those four workshops worked out, and um, we'll think about bringing those to teachers and so forth in the fall. Thank you all so much for this really rich conversation and presentation, and we'll see you all next week. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Adicia, uh, Clyde reads your handwriting.
Oh yeah, that's oh, a good maybe. point. Okay. You can I take I, I need, at least you can read my handwriting. I go press because my handwriting is chicken scratch. No, it's really no, good. It'll, it'll, it'll even read yours, Adita. <laughs> what? I'm telling you, it can read it. <laughs> it's crazy. I'm impressed. Night, everybody. Good night. Bye. Thank you so much, everyone.